For more on the markets and the latest economic data south of the border, we're joined by Ed Clissold. He's chief U.S. strategist at Ned Davis Research. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, uh, thanks very much for joining us, uh, Ed. Uh, your takeaway on the market's interpretation of the Fed's announcement yesterday. Uh, certainly, the markets seem to take a glass half full approach to what the Fed had to say. Yeah, they did because you know the, the Fed raised rates as expected, uh, but they were able to raise rates because the economy has been doing fairly well. Corporate profits are doing better than expected. And so um, in that regard, uh, you know, the, the, the premature calls for a recession, you know, which were so strong earlier in the year, are now being pushed out. And it looks like th there's a window here, Paul, for uh, the economy to continue to do well, which will allow risk assets to continue to recover for a while longer, which is why I think that the markets overall reacted positively uh, to Powell's comments and the Fed's decision. What do you think of uh, this morning's GDP print, which shows second quarter GDP materially stronger than expected? Yeah, so I think it's um, it's more of the same, and that the the economy is is doing better than what most economists had expected. There's something called the Citigroup um, Economic Surprise Index, and that looks at all economic data compared to economic expectations, and it's been above zero. That is, you know, the data beating expectations for almost the entire year. So uh, it really shows an economy that is resilient, an economy that. Um, is able to has been able to adjust to uh, some of the, the COVID disruptions, uh, adjust to the higher interest rates, um, and so it, it really is about uh, not necessarily that the, the Fed won't eventually cause a recession. We're worried that there may be a policy mistake late this year into 2024. But for now, um, probably uh, it, it means uh, the the rally can go a little bit longer. The, the risk is, of course, the economy gets too hot and the Fed has to hike you know quicker. Than expected. I want to get your reaction to something that was said by a former Fed, a Fed vice chair earlier this morning on uh, Bloomberg Television, our partners at Bloomberg Television. He is Richard Claret, a former vice chair. He spoke to Bloomberg Television. He said he expects at least one more rate hike this year. Here's that, uh, here's that quote. I think certainly one more hike is in play at some point in the fall. No, the chair said that explicitly. He also said that when he was in Europe a couple of weeks uh, ago. So I don't think it's a, an overly high hurdle to get that hike. I don't think they necessarily have to do it uh, in, in uh, September. I will say this, whatever hiking they think they need to do, I think they want to get in uh, this year. Your reaction, Ed, uh, Richard Clarita saying one more hike this year is certainly possible. Well, I'd agree that one more hike is is possible, even probable. Uh, if you were to ask me, you know, to take the over or the under, um, I'd take the over. I, I think the Fed could possibly take a pause the next meeting, hike again, and then there'd be one more meeting before the end of the year, and they may need to to hike uh, again after that because the, the inflation rates, which have been coming down in the U.S. for the almost a year now, uh, could start to plateau above the Fed's two percent target, uh, and and so I think the risk would be uh, of the Fed hiking more than the market is expecting. Again, maybe not in the next next meeting or two. You know, one hike in the next two meetings is probably a, you know getting close to consensus. After that, I think is when the risks really come into play. But I would agree with his statement that the Fed maybe wants to get as much of it done this year as they can as we move into 2024. You know, the Fed says they're independent, they're you know, legally independent by Congress, but they don't want to get into the mess of the presidential election. Okay, let's uh, let's pivot to second quarter earnings season. Meta, the latest company to exceed expectations, and that stock is moving up in a big way in the pre-market trade. Uh, what uh, is your uh, assessment of uh, second quarter earnings so far? So far, they've been very solid. Uh, almost 80% of companies in the S&P 500 who have reported, about a third of them have reported, have beaten, beaten expectations. So that's that's very good, a little bit better than, than last quarter even, um, and broke a two-year downtrend that it was going on before then. So I think it shows that companies have gotten a better handle on the inflationary environment. In fact, inflation has come down. It's, it's probably helped them as well. Now, what's a little more challenging for Q2 versus Q1, Paul, 
is that uh, consensus coming into Q1 earnings season was for only about one and a half percent earnings growth for the S and P 500 year over year, um, and it, it was proved to be better than expected. Now consensus is for about 10 percent earnings growth Q2 versus Q2 of last year. So while companies are beating expectations, they think we're going to get the dollar amount increase that we got um, during last quarter may, may be a little bit tougher. But the early early signs have been fairly positive. Corporate America, um, you know, is doing its job and uh, delivering decent profit growth. Uh, at Ned Davis, uh, you have downgraded, uh, in terms of your sector allocations, you have reduced weighting to the defensives. That's an, an interesting call, the defensives, including healthcare, utility, and consumer staples. Why so? Well, I think it's part of the broader discussion we had at the very beginning, that the, the economy is proving to be resilient, and there's a, a bigger window here for risk assets to outperform. So we've been overweight tech for a while, so that's been the, the main sector overweight, and we had balanced that with a little bit of defensives uh, with utilities and healthcare, and then uh, we switched that out for um, an overweight to industrials to get the cyclical tilt to balance out the tech, and then staples was market weight. We took it to underweight. Ed, thank you very much.